don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> yeah, but you're thinking they're picking on my baby. I know. I have a really hard time. And I have a hard time knowing if it's just a, like normal fighting or bullying. Yes, and there is a difference. You're listening to the Nacho Kids Podcast, where we discuss all things step family related. Real stories, real people, real help. Your hosts are the creators of the Nacho Kids Method and the Nacho Kids Academy Step Family Coaching Team, Lori and David Sims. Welcome to episode 201 of the Nacho Kids Podcast. Unfortunately, David is not available to be with us today, so it's just going to be me. Before I forget, we do have some scholarships available, courtesy of Sylvia Krakauer. You can apply for a scholarship at nachokids.com slash scholarships. And the winner of this month's scholarship, well, that's hard to say, is T. Crawford. T. Crawford, check your email and we will get you started in bettering your blend. This weekend is Easter in the States. I remember when David's kids were here and the kids were younger, of course, David's mom would always have some kind of little day around Easter that she would hide eggs. They could make cotton candy. They could make tie-dye t-shirts or ice cream sundaes. Just a fun little get-together. One year, I remember we took bananas and tied a string around our waist and tied the banana onto the string, and we had to try to get the banana into a mason jar. That was a lot of fun. Do you have blended family traditions that you celebrate for Easter? If so, let us know. Share those with us at contact us at nachokids.com. Our guests today are Cecile and Frank from Ella's Blended Family. Cecile and Frank have been blending for nine years. Cecile brought two boys into the blend, and Frank brought two boys into the blend. They have no bio kids together, but they do have a dog. And I am not going to tell you the dog's name. You'll figure it out. The hardest part of blending for Cecile was fighting and jealousy between the step-siblings. And for Frank, it was newly added chaos in the house, less quiet time. Frank, feel your pain, man, feel your pain. Best advice, Cecile says, do not take it personally. When the stepkids are indifferent about you, it has nothing to do with you. Amen. For Frank, the best advice is, don't sweat the small stuff. I like that. Just like us and many of our listeners, Frank and Cecile, they had some struggles and did things, let's just say, not the right way, or they didn't execute them properly. Let's get to listening as they share their story. Today, we have Cecile and Frank. Hey, Cecile, how are you? Oh, and Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm great. How are you, Lori? Good. <laughs> Frank, we're going to treat you like we do, David. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Be like, oh, yeah, Frank's here, too. Yeah, he's here. So let's just go ahead and start off. You've got a blog. Yes. And the name of your blog is? Is Ella's Blended Family. And I checked your blog out. Yes. And some people um, actually think my name is Ella. <laughs> well, I would have thought that too until <laughs> yes. I read your blog. So who? Ella's our dog. Yeah, Ella's your dog. <laughs> yeah, she's the last one to complete our family. So it makes sense for us to, to say, hey, it's Ella's blended family. Yes. So it's us. Well, it's really funny because our dog, Ziva, she <laughs> seemed to bring the family together. Yeah. She was one thing everybody loved. Yes, exactly. Right? That's right. Yes. The stepkids are now in their 20s and all over the place. And they'll call and say, how's Ziva doing? What is she doing? Like, they care more about the dog than us. That's right. They're mm -hmm. always happy to see Ella each morning to get up and she gets the attention, not us. Yes. <laughs> and it's also funny because we got a rescue dog a couple of years ago. And the interaction between the rescue dog and Ziva were very similar to the blend between our kids. Was it? Yes. It was crazy. Huh. She would huh. go and hide and she was depressed and she didn't want anything to do with him. If he, like, had a bone, then, of course, she didn't want her bone. She wanted his bone. 
And she would jump up on the couch and start barking out the window like somebody was here to get him to do it. And then she'd go somewhere else and we'd start fussing at him to quit barking. Well, it makes sense, right? Yeah. Someone is taking, it might take his place, right? Right. Yeah. It changes all the family dynamic. Exactly. She's no yeah. longer the only one. Yes. And she's like, what's going on? What's going on? Am I the older one now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not the new toy. She's not the baby anymore. Yeah. Not the baby. Yeah. So it's ironic to watch because we actually found a home for the rescue dog. We loved him, but he was trained to be a weapon and we just couldn't have him here for liability reasons with my son and his friends. And so we ended up getting two puppies last January. Yes, I've lost my mind. (laughs) <laughs> two puppies. Oh my God. Did it happen also with the two puppies? Did you yes. notice? Yes. Yeah, as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. But she doesn't hide as much from them because with the rescue dog, we would find her upstairs in the back room. But w- huh. with these dogs, she just, she's more aggressive with them. She growls at them a lot. And, you know, it's getting a little better, but it might be because they're spastic and she's nine years old. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of age different for yeah. for sure. Yeah, but it still is funny to look and we're like, yep, just like kids and family. Yep, yeah. that's right. Exactly. So tell us a little bit about your blog and how long you've been blending and how many kids y'all have and all that good stuff. All right. Well, we've been blending for nine years. I have two sons, Benjamin and Nicholas, and Frank has two sons. They're a little bit older. Well, they were a little bit older than my son. And um, yeah, so nine nine, uh, nine years already. <laughs> and my blog, I started during COVID. Oh, did in, you? Uh, yes. I wanted to start something for Blended Family for years because I wanted support that I didn't get when I met Frank in 2014. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find... I had a really tough time the first few years when I met Frank. I searched for support, but I couldn't find anything in our area. It was mostly between the kids, like you said about the dogs. Mm -hmm. Uh, We had a hard time um, blending the kids. Um, So I couldn't find anything. So I said, I want to to help family because we were doing better in 2020 during COVID. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I. I'm going to try to start a blog. So I had no idea if I wanted to start writing in French or English, but Frank said, I'll, I'll help you. I'll, I'll help you. And you write in English and I'll correct all your (laughs) grammar. (laughs) Good job, Frank. Good job. Got to support somehow. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I'm glad you picked English so I can read it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, it's a, it's a work in progress for sure. So uh, my goal is to write at least every two weeks. But in the last year, I I concentrate more on a course that I've been doing as well. So I've been working on a six-week course that I'm doing in person in our community. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I think I might uh, put that course online later on. So... That would in be French great. and English. There yeah. you go. Language, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So I I did my first launch last weekend. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, where are you located? If you don't mind my asking, because there may be no, people no. in your community that don't know about you. Yeah, in New Brunswick. Okay. Uh, Canada. It's in um, Dieppe. Well, people know Moncton. It's, it it would be about nine hours. Uh, nine hours east of Montreal uh, or uh, about seven and a half hours from Boston. So it kind of gives that triangle. Right. Uh, if we kind of get that, that geography thing, I, I know a lot of people in geography don't get along. So I, <laughs> I kind of use the bigger cities as examples. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and I struggle with geography. So that's good. You kind of gave me an idea of where you are. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. how old are the kids? My youngest is 13. Mm-hmm. My oldest is 16. And Frank's, Kid Jacob is 16, soon to be 17, and the oldest is 18. So going to college, the first year to going to college. So 
So you each have a kid that's 16. Yes, they're only nine months apart. Wow. Was that yeah. the biggest struggle? No, actually, it was the youngest kid with um, Frank, Frank's two kids, Oh, I would say. Mostly yeah. the oldest, yeah. Mostly the oldest, but Jacob as well, because Jacob was the youngest in Frank's family, mm-hmm. and he he has a struggle with my youngest because he was not the baby anymore. Mm-hmm. But the oldest, Frank's oldest and my youngest are really similar. And they they don't think they are similar. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> but they are like they're really uh, they have a strong character. And um, yeah, they have their And, you know, we did stuff that might didn't help when we moved together. Nicholas was young. He was only, what, five? Five years old and when we moved together we moved in frank's house mm-hmm. so there was not enough space for all of us and frank's kid was only going every second weekend so we thought the best thing to do is put the smaller kid close to our bedroom because he was walking uh waking up during the night and waking up really early in the morning but that was xavier's bedroom mm-hmm. so we move Xavier and we put the youngest and I think that's uh, something we did wrong I think we should have do it another way I'm not really sure what way we could have done it but I think maybe switching everyone room uh, would have been a a better solution make it something more fun um, decorating room like a new decoration for everyone and switching everyone instead of just switching two kids right I, f- I feel that, you know, Xavier thought he was losing his, you know, his his place yeah. uh, in our family. Yeah. Yeah, you're moving and me think, out and moving this kid in. Yes, you know, right? Yeah. And it was, we were together, what, a year and a half when we moved in? Yeah, about a year and a half. Yeah, the intention was right. The execution was wrong. Right. A lot of yeah. times, and, you know, we screwed up every way you could, so it's normal to screw up, but... A lot of times it's best if you can make those changes before you moved in. So, yes. so if, you know, six months before you moved in, if Frank said, hey, we're going to move your room down here, you know, but you don't think about that stuff. No, that's a great idea, though, Lori. I didn't talk about that to it before. Yeah, we had um, talked about some <laughs> stuff with Jackson because Jackson loved to come crawl in my bed. You know, before we got married. And yes. I didn't care. In fact, I love it. And But I had to kind of break him of that before we got married because I didn't want him to blame that on David. Yes. My kids used to come in bed in the morning, and Frank didn't like that. <laughs> but Frank would have been okay if it was his kids. No. No, no, no Frank. It, it's... uh. The bedroom was the only place where I kind of left it to, to our space. Uh, the rest of the house was pretty much owned by the kids. So toys, they, they had kind of free free for all around the house. They could play where they wanted to. They didn't have a specific room. But the bedroom, that's one place where you, know, you knock before you get it. You, you come in. Yeah. Uh, all those little things that we tried to teach them. Mm-hmm. This doesn't mean we didn't want them to walk in the room. It just meant we, it needed to be. Uh, done in a way that you know a knock would say okay come on in and 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 so yeah. forth but it, for, for Cecile it was a little different the, yeah the door was always open and yeah uh, even and, now like I don't shut my like when Frank leave for the week I don't shut my door <laughs> <laughs> the bedroom door but he it, it's his boundary like he needs space for himself yes so, oh I get I it I'm surprised yeah. though because I know a lot of Parents, they're like, well, I don't mind my kid doing it, but I don't want that nasty stepkid doing it. Yeah. No, I, I honestly, I think that's something where it didn't matter if it was my kids, her kids, our kids, whatever, how you want to call it. I think for me, it's always about the same rules for everybody anyways. Mm-hmm. I, I tend to not try to to have, it, it's difficult sometimes, but you, you try to treat them all the same if, if yeah. all possible. And this is one of those cases where for me, it, it made no difference who it was. I think it was just about consistency. Yes. Yeah, that was something that Frank was able to do that really like surprised me is 
being able to treat the kids somewhat equal more than I did or or anybody that I can see like his kid and my kid were probably treated and probably equal from day one right and that's hard yeah. to do oh my god yes and it's not that you intentionally treat them differently no and we see it all the time you're supposed to love them like your own I love my stepkids I do but nothing oh. like my son no exactly I love them and I want the best for them and I but I mean unconditional love takes time and I mean it it has to be different. I, I I can't see that you can love. There's there's a difference. Yeah, it's just I different. I separated that. For me, it was you're right. Your kids, you're always going to have a, a closer bond for sure. Mm -hmm. However, this was an action. <clears throat> so for me, I was able to kind of separate both the action and, and the feeling. Oh, I, I don't know if that makes sense, but yes, compartmentalization. I, I, <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm a I'm a very black and white personality. Like I, I I tend to be able to kind of split the things where I need to. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's for good, sometimes for yes. bad. But I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, I would never go get my kid McDonald's and not get the stepkid something. That's just wrong. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't do that either. But I was you now a lot of it might have had to do with the age gap too. I expected more out of the stepkids at their age than I did Jackson when he got their age. So for instance, when the stepkids were teenagers and David would fix their breakfast or lay their clothes out, I'm like, my gosh, come on, they're teenagers. But when Jackson became a teenager, I'm like, darling, what you want for breakfast? <laughs> yeah, I I can see that. I can relate to that for sure. Mm -hmm. But I still spoil all of them for that. <laughs> Way too much. I still make their lunches, even if they're like 18. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. And here's the thing. I would have, but they complained when I did things. They didn't want me doing those things because oh. to them, it came across as I was trying to replace their mom. Yeah. Yeah. So they wanted dad to do it or mom all to do it. And exactly. I spoil them too, as much as I can. And for instance, one of the stepkids got out of the Air Force recently, and he came and stayed with us. And I wanted to make sure he had bagels because he likes bagels and toaster strudels. You know, I wanted him to have those things that he likes. That he likes, yeah. 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 Frank's kid were really, it's not that they didn't like me. They were really indifferent. They didn't care that I was in the house or anything at the beginning, like for the first few years. Well, you probably didn't come in like I did. I came in with, y'all are going to go to bed at a certain time. You're going to have chores. You're going to do your homework. I just came in like a sergeant almost of, this is how it's going to be. You, yeah. you obviously did not do that because they wouldn't have been indifferent to you. They would have not liked you. Probably, but Xavier had a hard time with me. I yeah. think. Now, being the oldest, you definitely saw a difference. I think yeah. he understood more than the others. Uh, being the age that he was, you know, separation was something he understood. I think mm -hmm. the younger ones didn't have the same level of understanding. Mm -hmm. And uh, for him, it might have been, well, there's a replacement in the house now. Without having the proper, not being uh, uh, mature enough to kind of understand that it's not a replacement. It, it's just uh, mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, I guess. Yeah. It was different. Yeah. But you're right, though. I was not the authority person mm -hmm. frank was already doing that job <laughs> <laughs> good job frank good job <laughs> <laughs> and uh for my kids though they they really they really liked frank from the beginning they didn't they didn't had any problem at the beginning right with you no i, I mean the age too right you got a five-year-old yeah, and they a were six young. and a half year old mm -hmm. they, they tend to get attached easier uh, to an, a, a new environment, they adapt easier than, than I would today at my age. Oh, yeah. Uh, it just a, fa a fact, I guess. Yes. Well, and a lot mm -hmm. of it, there's so many factors. A lot of it depends on if these kids have external factors, such as bio mom or in laws that are bashing the step parent. Exactly. And I thought we didn't have that problem to start with. Yes. There was no, so that maybe helped for sure. Yeah. How often did you have, did you have all your kids on the exact same days and they would go to the other parent 
and give y'all a uh, break? How did that work? <laughs> that that kind of yes, and it also changed throughout the years. Uh, when yeah. when we first met again, like like Cecilia mentioned a little earlier, I had to travel a lot for work. So the agreement I had with the other bio parent was that the kids were there. I would get the kids every second weekend, and that would be it. As time went by, and yes, that second weekend we happened to have the same second weekend uh, that we currently have today. Time went by, my kids ended up being 50-50, decided to come in 50-50, and now both of them are here full time. Oh. So I went from one point where they only had every couple of weekends to half of the time to all the time yes. uh, within, the, within the nine years. So we saw something. And, and to me, it says a lot. I mean, the fact that they made that choice tells me that Cecile, as much as she says that that she didn't have the same bond with, with the kids, I think it shows if they're willing to come here to 50-50 to full time, I think she did a good job. Oh, of course. Definitely. Well, it took some time. Yeah. Year two is where things went to crap for us. And yeah. one step kid would call and say, has she moved out yet? Because I'm not coming unless she did. Oh, my God. Yeah. And David's like, no, she hasn't moved out and you are coming. <laughs> there you go. That's what, yeah, David did the right thing. See, my kids were with us all the time as well. They were going to their father every two weeks if they could. And this is the arrangement that went still the same from till this day. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And I mean, when we first moved together, like the first two, two year, I think I disengaged the first year I was trying too much with kid, Frank's kid I thought I was going to be like you know a big family all all happy the and, Brady Bunch yes and you know it didn't work out that mm -mm. way like they were more indifferent they didn't care who was there or not or they didn't really care so I win um them with making supper I try to make them supper something they really really like when they were coming over yeah <laughs> Said bribing with food works really well with boys. Oh, yes. Yes. But it was tough. Yeah. yeah. And being indifferent towards you can also be hurtful. I, you know what? I think it was more hurtful than, you know, hating me. Because hating is like a feeling. Indifferent, it was like, you don't matter yeah. at all. So I don't. You don't matter enough to for me to have feelings for you. Yeah. I, I it was really it was really it was it hurt, really hurt. Yeah. Well, and then yeah. you automatically think, "What's wrong with me? Why don't they like me? Or what am I doing wrong to of where course. these kids don't want to engage with me?" And it had nothing to do with you. Oh, I, today I know, yeah. but before I I had no idea because I loved kid. Like when I, I met Frank, I was so happy that he had kids. We're going to be a big family. I love kids. I had fantasy that they're going to love me. We're going to do like all kind of activities. And then I come in and, you know, this is not happening right away. So right. it was, yeah, it was deceiving. But now, like it took a few years, but it, you know, it, it's working out okay now. So yeah, it takes time. Yeah. And we all think, well, you know, we tried to prepare for our blend. We read books, we talked to oh, counselors yeah. because we knew it wouldn't be easy. Yeah. But it's like nothing can prepare you for reality. No, not at all, because we're so unique. Right. And every family is different. Yes. Every kid goes to different feeling than we do. Yeah. And I think as soon as I was able to put myself into the kids like um place, mm -hmm. um, I was able to see what they were going through. It get it got better. Right. Like after I realized what we did to Xavier and his room, and I told them about that, that we were sorry about that. That you know I I just like I I just noticed after and, you know, that they were still grieving their parents' relationship ending. And their, so after I was able to, you know, just not think about me mm -hmm. and think about all the other in our family, it got better. Yeah. So it's, it's, just, it's not something you, you consider because you know, when, when we decided to kind of move in with each other, I mean, we, we had known each other for a year and a half. The kids, 
and we we saw each other you know a few times a week a minimal but the the, the boys weren't always there so for them uh we had the time like we had already moved on we decided to get separated for a reason so we had already kind of checked out of the last relationship mm -hmm. but that that doesn't necessarily mean that the boys had done so they hadn't done they hadn't completed their their grieving process right. they were probably months away from from where we were mm -hmm. yes and first of all cecile you had a great point i know when things were so bad for us i couldn't see what the stepkids were going through and honestly i didn't care because my life was being flipped turned upside down they wanted me out of the house i had sold my house and it's just I couldn't see past my own hurt. Exactly. I couldn't see. I, I was just seeing me, like myself, what it was hurting me. And I couldn't see that. They couldn't see even that I was hurt. And they probably don't even see that I was hurt even now mm -hmm. because they're kids. Right. <laughs> like, I can't expect that. Yeah. I can't expect that from my kids. How can I expect that from my stepkids? Yes. And then, too, Frankie brought up about how the kids, they hadn't finished their grieving. And I think it's normal for the majority of kids, I won't say all kids, to have that little bit of hope their parents will get back together. Oh, yes, they do. They do for a long time. Even, at, even like after you meet somebody new, mm -hmm. they can have that feeling for a long time. Yes. And we've noticed, too, that the relationships can be going good and say, like, you moved in with Frank, things are good for five, six years, then y'all get married. And then it, it resets the blend almost because yes. they're like, wait a minute, we still had hope that Cecile would go away at some point. Yes. And this is yes. cementing the fact that she's not going anywhere. That's right. I think when there's like big events in their family, we're going backwards a little bit. Yes. Like when Frank's kids move here like full time, just to, just to say like Benjamin, my oldest, went through like, I don't know, he was not himself for a couple of months. And it it just, you know, I just noticed after I said, well, it's true. He doesn't have the basement anymore for himself for a week. Mm -hmm. He can't watch what he wanted for a week. Like he's losing like his little plays that he had for a week now. Like he has to share all the time. So his life is changing again, all over again. Yes. Yeah. You said you knew each other about a year and a half before you moved in together. How long had each of you been separated from your previous partner or divorced or whatever? For me, it was slightly over two years. Okay. Two years, yeah. But Frank was living with his ex for a while. She stayed in the house before they, they move apart. So the kids didn't notice any different. Oh. So that makes a big uh, big change for them, right? Yeah, we, we had the house for sale. Unlike we, what we saw in the last 24 months, at the time, it was a buyer's market. Yeah which means the house was taking a long time to sell. So it was it was for her to go out paying two bills. It was a financial decision mm -hmm. at the time. Do I regret it? Yes, to a certain extent. But if, if I would have went back and did it differently, uh, you know, we might not have been as stable financially after getting getting through that. As we know, it, yeah. it does affect your finances slightly. Yes. And that was kind yeah. of part of the thing. I was living downstairs. She was living upstairs. So yeah, yeah she still is right. For the kids, it... It wasn't 100% normal, but there's definitely wasn't, they didn't start to move on until they actually moved out of the house and she went into her, her own place. Right, because yeah. things didn't change drastically until then. No, exactly. Yeah, you were still there. She was still there, even though you're on different floors of the house. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. For us, it was just a year before that we start um, thinking about divorce, but it was not very long before I met Frank, but I'm, I'm gonna, my, my ex-husband had a, an affair. So I tried really hard, but it was over before, long before uh, we actually divorced and split up houses as well. So, yeah. but for the kids, like Frank's kids, it was only a few, like half a year, a year, maybe. 
for them before I met Frank. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not long. So how were the kids when towards each other when you first met or when they first met? Like between them, you mean? Yeah, between them. When your kids met his kids for the first time, were things weird but okay? We went to the movie the first time we they met. So I wanted something like really neutral. I didn't want to go to his house or I wanted something neutral. He can say hi, but not too much for the first meeting. Yeah, and you can't say much at the movies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just to see, say hi. And I I even saw um, some friction or between my youngest and the oldest, even on that day. Really? <laughs> yes. They didn't like to, because Frank was sitting beside the youngest. And I think that really didn't help. So it's possible. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, Milos was still young at the time. Yeah, he was uh, nine. Was just nine. turned nine. Yeah. So there's definitely something different there uh, from a dynamics point of view. And and for him, change is, wasn't always as easy as it comes for other kids. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely something there. Yeah. And Nicholas is really someone that hugs and can leave with anybody. Like he's really friendly and warm. So he was all over Frank already. <laughs> so maybe Xavier didn't like that. You know, he's just like, hey, it's my dad. Yeah. What are you doing? Get off my dad. Yeah, exactly. But the first, like, first year that they, we were doing stuff together and not living together, it was not that bad, though. We had a few great activities and meeting. They were always asking for each other. But after we moved together, this is the point where it started going downhill. <laughs> I like yeah. you from a distance. Oh, a really, really far distance. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. It was really bad. Like enough that I thought about leaving a couple of times. Yeah. I, it was just, I couldn't do it. Like it was walking on eggshell all the time. Like even just waking up and Frank's kids sitting at the table and Nicholas getting up, they were already mad and not happy with e- with each other at all. So yeah, the youngest gets picked on a normal normal family. Uh-huh. Uh, so this this was already to take that and multiply it by a factor. Yes. And I know with my son, with my son, David had his four kids. So they were like a little gang. Yeah. And of course they picked on Jackson. And in the beginning, I would rescue Jackson. But I realized I do you do. <laughs> yes. But I realized it was important for me to let Jackson fight his own battles because I won't be at school with him when he has confrontations or issues. And two, by me always rescuing him, of course, the stepkids get in trouble. And so David's like, just leave him alone, don't have anything to do with him. So it was preventing that bonding that they could have had. And some of the fighting would have could have been looked at as nuclear sibling fighting. My sisters and I fought like crazy. Yes, may see I I'm a I'm a lo- only child, so I had a really hard time knowing if it was just like sibling, you know, fighting or are they really fighting? Right. So I was always rescuing Nicholas and I'm still doing it and I think Nicholas doesn't take his place. That's the, that's why I still do it. And he's 13. I mean, he yeah. needs to take his place. But yes, I was micromanaging all the fighting. And I know it, it was, it's my biggest challenge. I think even today, Frank tells me all the time, don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> yeah. But you're thinking they're picking on my baby. I know I have a really hard time and I have a hard time knowing if it's just like normal fighting or bullying. Yes. And there is a difference. Yes. And sometimes I think it's really a fine line. Yes. Yes. Between the oldest and the youngest, it's a really fine line. Mm -hmm. So this is why I, I, because he's always alone. Like even my, my oldest, he will gang with Frank's 
<laughs> uh, children on my son, my my youngest. So this is why it's, I don't know. Yeah, they're it's all a- picking on the baby and you feel like yes. you're at a playground watching your kid be, and we're going to use this word that probably shouldn't be used, but abused. And yes. it's like, well, what do I do? You want to go rescue them, tell the stepkids off or your own kid off if he's part of it for picking on your baby. I know. Yeah. Yes. It's it's hard. I remember they were playing Airsoft one day and Jackson comes in crying and I could tell it, he was hurt. And I'm like, what's wrong? And he's like, Ethan shot me in my hand. Well, he shot Jackson very closely. I mean, they were probably three feet apart. And so I'm trying to take care of Jackson and make sure he's okay. And I am mad at Ethan, mad. And so when Ethan came in, I said something to him and I said, did you shoot him on purpose? He said, yeah. I said, why? He said, because you've got him all wrapped up so good that when we shot him, he couldn't even feel it. So I had to make sure he felt it. Oh my God. (laughs) And of course I'm like, David, you better do something. He yeah. hurt my baby on purpose. <laughs> oh, those nerve gun. Yeah. The, those, yeah. Well, no, it, it was an airsoft gun. Uh, yes. And that hurts. Yes. That hurts from a distance. And yeah, we still talk about that. No, of course we can laugh about it today, but I was livid. I was livid. And of course it made me not like my stepkid at that time. Like how yeah, dare you was- do that? And that's probably uh, that's probably one of the reason we had such difficulty, uh, Xavier and I, to connect. Because Xavier and I, like Frank's oldest and I, we only connected what two years ago, I would say, more. Yeah, yeah during COVID, more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say Jacob. It was easier, and then Xavier later on he was not. He doesn't talk much, so. I, he's not yeah. he's not talkative at all <laughs> for Jacob it was, you're right it was easier for him it was the second we, we we walked down the aisle and said everything I do for him it was like okay things are normal now mm-hmm. yeah it was funny for Jacob as soon as we decided to get married it was like okay this is it she's staying mm-hmm. so yep everything changed from that day yeah 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 one of David's kids isn't very talkative either and it's hard because you don't know what they're thinking. No, exactly. Yeah. And you don't know if they're struggling or what's going on because they're just not very talkative. No. And I guess I would say out of the relationships with the stepkids, Jackson is closer to two of the triplets just because they seem to bond. Yeah. And they still talk to today, which is good. I'm glad because yes. I was worried that when they moved out, they would just forget about him. So are they all moved out? Yes. Yes, okay. They are, let's see, the triplets will be 23 this year. Okay. And Avery, the oldest, will be 25 this year. And three of them went in the Air Force. One of them is still in the Air Force. He is in Germany right now. Avery, and he was in the Air Force. He's still in the Air Force right now, but he's getting out soon. And he's stationed about an hour and a half away from us. And then one of them got out of the Air Force, but he now lives in Georgia about four and a half hours away. Okay. So they still talk. This is what I hope for my kids, that there's still a connection after they all move out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You hope so, because especially with my kid, he would go from being an only child to having four step siblings every other week. And it's funny because when people ask him if he has any brothers he or has any siblings, he'll say, I've got four brothers. He doesn't say stepbrothers. Yeah, for us either. They always say they they have they have brothers. Right. And David's kids always refer to Jackson as a stepbrother. Hmm. I think it's just because, like I said, they were a little gang. They were older. Jackson was five years younger than the triplets, so... Yeah. He doesn't remember life before them, really. No. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just hope they stay close because I, I always tell them, you know, 
brothers or siblings is the longest relationship you have. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's not parents or anything. It's your siblings. Mm -hmm. It's the longest relationship in a lifetime that you will have. Right. But one thing we do have to also realize is, like my sisters, I've got a sister that's five years older. She actually passed away five years ago. And I've got a sister that's five years younger. My older sister and I, we got along. We, Like I said, we all fought like crazy, but <laughs> we had a closer relationship than I do with my younger sister. Yeah, We just, we don't click very well. Well, I mean, everyone has different personality and you, we always click with different personality and different people. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. So Frank, how do you feel about things? For me, I, I've got a, I, I kind of go through life a little differently than Cecile. I, I she mentioned Don Swift, the small stuff. That's <laughs> I learned that lesson really early on. I, I don't remember who who actually told me that, uh, but it's something that always stuck with me. So when I get when I get we hit a wall, uh, for me it's like okay, it's going to work out. We just let let some time. Let's focus. Let's find a solution. That's kind of the way I, I approach my day to day, mm -hmm. I guess, and it's. It's worked so far for me. It takes away the stress and and all that. But for us as a family, when I walked, when I unlike Cecile, when we moved in together, I was expecting issues to happen. Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking it was going to be all rose colored glasses all the time. I, I I knew there was some difficult times ahead. So mentally, I think I was probably better prepared mm -hmm. uh, for that because I was expecting it. I didn't know what it was going to be. Right. I didn't know the severity. I had I had no idea, you know, being a child from my my parents were together. Uh, there was no separations in, in in the family at all, like even aunts and uncles. I had no idea. It wasn't something that really was prevalent around my my family. Mm -hmm. But I had friends that the parents had gone through separations, and I, I kind of I knew they had stepbrothers or stepsisters, and you could see some. I remember that at times they had issues. But I also remember that today, uh, just like you mentioned, they still talk to their step siblings, and for them, it's still part of the family. They they still celebrate holidays together. So I had hope. Yeah, so I had more fantasy. <laughs> it might be my upbringing. I don't know what it was, but it just like Cecil says, I'm I'm more of a realist. I'm I'm not a pessimist or an optimist. I, I'm really kind of down the middle. Uh, so it's, I'm a flat line for most, most people will say I'm a flat line. I, I won't get overly excited and I won't get overly depressed. So I think that's probably the part that really helped me get through this, uh, is, is that, that flat line approach, uh, really, you know, something went bad. I could handle it. Something was really good. I didn't get overexcited because, you know, adding more fantasy to the, to the equation, I guess. Right. I know with me, it was an emotional roller coaster. Oh. For me too, it was a roller coaster. Yes, but, and I'm sure you feel the same way, Cecile, that I've learned so much and I've grown as a person through this process. Absolutely, yes, yes. And I also, like the fantasy I had, I also, um, you know, you have to let it go at some point and say, you know what? This is it, and it's good. Mm -hmm. And when you do, it's really good. Like I, I like what we have. I really do, mm -hmm. and it's really close from what I wanted, actually. Well, we have to remember when we have these Brady Bunch dreams. Y'all don't have an Alice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't either. So if Alice would have cooked, the kids wouldn't have complained about my food. If Alice would have made the kids do homework, we wouldn't have had that issue. We need an Alice. All blended families need an Alice so she can be the bad guy. That's right. <laughs> That's a very good analogy. I would never even have thought of that at all. Yeah. But yeah, very true. It's true. <laughs> and they loved Alice. Yeah. Yeah. I I haven't figured that out yet, how they loved Alice when she was the disciplinarian in the home. Yeah. Now, Well, yeah. Go ahead. Frank is disciplinary. Yeah. Uh, here and they all love Frank. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Cecile. When yep. Frank, uh, let's say, corrects or disciplines one of yes. your children, 
does it bother you? Well, you know what? When we started, I I really love your site, by the way. Thank you. He started by disciplining my kids and we were not comfortable at all. So we decided to stop that right away. And uh, I did discipline my kids. He disciplined his kids. So we did uh, use the natural kid method. Good. Yes, it was the best thing. So we played like the role of like a like a role model, mm-hmm. like an uncle or an aunt for the longest time. And I'm still playing that role. I don't discipline Xavier or Jacob, mm-hmm. but uh, Frank will step in for um, Benjamin and Nicholas. Yeah, and that's, that's more because they've been with us full time mm-hmm. for nine years. So there's a lot. The rapport is already there. The bond was already created. So yes. It makes it easier. Mm-hmm. There's still limits. There's things that yes. I will pass the baton when I need to. Yes. Uh, of course, if there's anything to do with the child safety or something that is dangerous, both oh. of us will step in. Yes. It, there's, there's still limits of what can and cannot be done. But if it's one of those things that can be handled at a later time, yeah, we typically will we'll pass the baton to the other. Yes. We do have like house rules that everybody follows. Like we decided, Frank and I decide house rules. We shared them with the kids. They were on the fridge for the longest time. Mm-hmm. Everybody knew the consequences and everything like that. But really the discipline was each one our kids. The, so the key was consistency. Yeah. Well, I think we've all had friends that you go, you went to their parents' place and it wasn't consistent and it would become chaotic. Uh, a lot of resentment uh, amongst each other i think the consistency here have is even more so important because they're not bio- biological brothers and sisters mm-hmm. uh, it, it really made a difference that we, they knew that if somebody did something it'd be the same consequence for each yes. didn't matter which parent what kid what it didn't matter at all it was going to be the same right it was fair it was, yeah it was, Yes. At least the best we could. Yeah. And we went also with the method that, you know, if something that I don't like about Xavier and Jacob, it was, I'm not the mom or the dad or like, it's Frank and his ex that are the parents. Like, I I don't have, there's so many things I have to say. Like, I don't know if it's something that I'm not... Does don't agree. Don't agree. Mm-hmm. There you go. It's you something I out. yeah. <laughs> I did that. If it's something that I don't agree, and for them it's really important for the boys. I mean, I'm just like I am. I, I'm not the one who has to say something about the kids. Like they already have a mom and a dad, and I didn't want to take that place. Like I, I'm here. I'm there to support them. And I'm here to reinforce like the rules and stuff like that. But that role is for the parents. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I know over time, I've built relationships with the stepkids that they know when I do, we'll say, quote, quote, parent them, that is out of love. Yes. Not out of evil stepmothering, not out of judgment. But one of the stepkids, I've sat down at the table with him several times and I've been son I'm concerned I'm concerned about the decisions you're making I know that you're wanting to do what's best just kind of go down that whole path with them and I mean even to the point that I'm like dude what are you thinking (laughs) and that is great it's like a great role model yeah like a positive role model that you know every kid's need yep someone they can talk to yes and that's what I try to tell people a lot of people misunderstand the Nacho Kids method. They think that it's ignoring the step kids completely. No. No, it's not. And the thing about it is you can be the safe place for these kids to fall. That's right. They'll tell me stuff they don't tell their dad because they want either me to tell him so they don't have to, or they want my yep. opinion on how to approach it. Exactly. Yep. Yep. For things that's really hard to talk about. They can talk to us because we don't have the same, you know, the same um, emotion or get too much emotion about it. Like, I think that's really hard to talk about, like uh, even even sexuality or, you know, topic that they don't want to talk to parents about it. Right. So, yeah. 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 And they're lucky they have that. 
yes. in their house. Well, I think everybody should have that. And I told my son, I've got a really good friend of mine, and I talked to her before I told him this. Now, he's got a good relationship with David, but David's, I wouldn't say the father figure, because David doesn't really parent him. David will say, Jackson, that's enough, if he sees that I'm about to flip out on Jackson. (laughs) But I told Jackson that my friend Holly will always be there for him. If he needs to talk to somebody, doesn't want to talk to me, doesn't want to talk to his dad, doesn't want to talk to David, she is a safe place for him. And yes. we all need that. Not just kids, but we all do. You, yes, we have. We all need a place so we can talk and be ourselves for sure. Yeah. So what advice? I know what Frank would say. Don't sweat <laughs> the small stuff. But that really is such good advice. And I know a lot of times... Driving down the road, somebody rides your butt, and you're like, I'm going to tap my brakes, and you just get all angry. There's no need for that. No. Pull over, let them go, and have a good day. That's right. So don't sweat the small stuff, like Frank said. Yep. That really helped me out. <laughs> yes, yes. And sometimes you have to really think about it and say, wait a minute. Yes, this makes me mad. I'm going to feel being mad. Don't suppress your emotions. Feel them. Yes. But don't let them consume you. Exactly. Because you're you're the only one who's going to get mad. Right. The others don't care. They're going to do their life. They're going to step out of the car and yeah. go on. Or like dishes. So. If you want to be mad for four hours because the dishes weren't done, you go ahead, but your life's short, and I hate that you're going to spend four hours mad about dishes. That's right. It's not going to change anything. Exactly. No. Yeah. You have no idea you're mad for four hours. Yes. Yeah. I'll tell people, when you're mad, take your phone, set a timer for five minutes. Yep. Sit there and be mad. Now, if your mind starts drifting to something else, stop it. Go back to being mad. That's right. You won't make it five. Yeah, you won't make it five minutes because you're like, this is stupid. I'm going to sit here and waste this time. But when you don't physically see a timer showing you how much time you're wasting worrying about something that's really irrelevant in the scheme of things, it's easier to just walk around and be mad. Yeah, that's right. That's a great idea. I love that. We've seen so many people be mad for a long period of time. And at the end of the time, by the time they're done being mad, they didn't remember why they were mad in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. And they, and during that time, they've said some very hurtful things that cannot be taken back. That's right. Yeah. Sometimes I I get so in my head with, you know, we're not always getting along with our ex or we have a lot of things to do. And I read about, you know, you take 10 minutes to vent Mm -hmm. about them, not in front of the kids, of course, when the the bedroom is door shut, 10 minutes and that's it. You stop. So, yeah. So you don't go hours and hours going around saying bad stuff about, you know, things that bother you about how your co-parent did stuff or. Yes. And then it's over. Yes. And and that's something else that we have to remember is we ended our relationship with our ex. The kids didn't. Yeah. No. And they can be put in very bad places with those loyalty bonds. Yeah. Yeah. Very. Yeah, we got. We have to make sure that the kids. I mean, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. they have another bio parent. There's most of the time no reason for them not to like the bio parent because they are. They're not usually. They're not the cause of the separation. It's 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 your ex and you that decide to part ways. Whatever the reason is, it's not because of kids. So the kids should not be put in that middle spot and and really in a com- uncomfortable no. position. I think it's unfair for them. Right. I was watching this TV show a few weeks ago, and it was a step family situation. And the bio kid was being really nasty to the bio mom. And the bio dad happened to be there because he was dropping off the kid. And so the kid starts bad mouthing the bio mom and the bio dad. Now, granted, they're not together. He said, hang on a minute. You're going to respect your mom. And I was thinking, if we could all support each other like that, even though we're not together, it would be so much better. 
even like uh, when the kids are doing homework or doing something, I would I would say to my kids, your dad is good at math or your dad can do that. Why don't you ask him? Mm -hmm. I would I would do that. So the kids would say, oh, yeah, I could ask my dad. Yeah, but just don't say your dad sucked at math. So don't ask him. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I would try to find something positive when they get home. I would ask how your weekend. Did you have fun? And I will also ask how's the they also have like a half brothers. I will ask, how is he? How is he doing? Was he excited to see you guys? Try to say positive. Yes. Definitely. So back to my question, Frank and Cecile, what would advice would you give someone that is getting into a blended family? Oh, there's a lot. Go ahead. We got time. (laughs) There's a lot. (laughs) Uh, I'll start, then I'll pass the baton over to Cecile. I I think the first thing is take your time. Don't rush things. Uh, I know we have a tendency of of looking at a clock and saying, well, we know when the example is when I first got married, it's like, okay, I've been going out with the girl for a year and a half. I'm, I'm 20, whatever years old. It's time for me to ask her to marry me. Okay. Once you ask her to marry me, okay. Usually two years before you're supposed to get married. So everything was on a timer for me. And I think for, for in this situation, we expect things to happen at a certain pace and we expect that be the same pace for everybody involved. I think once we realize that I work at a certain pace, Cecile went at a certain pace and each of the four boys in my case went at, a, at their own pace it made things easier. So we have to make sure that we, we are, we realize that everybody doesn't move at the same pace. That's, that's number one. Yes. The second one is, I think something that's very important is uh, try not to dream about something that's going to be always perfect. Cause you'll always be disappointed, but think of what, you know, live in the moment, be happy where you're at. I think it's another very important factor because some people always live in the future. They don't live in the present. And I think you see that a lot when you go to, a, a sports event or a concert, people are watching the event through their phone. They're recording everything. They're not living the moment. I think living the moment is another big thing for for blended families because everything is everything's changing all the time. Every couple of months, you may not see the difference. However, it's happening. The change is happening. You just don't see it because it's in small increments. But if you look back a couple of years, like we get to do today, nine years past, mm-hmm. You see that you actually see that the progress did happen and we went a long way. But we wouldn't have seen that if I was looking at it by week per week or day by day. Right. Yes. And I think it's important to celebrate every day that you've survived this blend because it's not easy. (laughs) Absolutely. And every little thing you gain or, you know, every. Yeah. (laughs) And we have to give ourselves, our partners, our stepkids, our own kids, our ours kids, everybody grace. Yeah, for sure. My advice would be to find tradition or things that you can do repeatedly over the years that the kids will look forward to do. Mm -hmm. So you can create memories. I think memories and fun stuff that they can do, they will remember that and they, they will look forward to it. And this will create bond because they can't wait for that to happen. Yes. So I think that was one. And one that I wish I knew sooner that I think the kids are always thinking about like in their head, but they they don't they don't know it is if I'm a bio mom as well, is let the kids know that it's okay to love the stepmom. As well, we have enough love for everyone in our heart. Like, this is what we want always. We want everyone to love our kids. When we drop them at school, we don't want them to, you know, we want them to make friends. So why would we don't want them to be okay to love the stepmom? Because some kids, they think if they love the stepmom, they are disloyal to their mom. Right. So they're putting like... um like, you know, like a, a fine line and they're, they're going to, you know, when they're having fun, they're going to say, oh, I, I shouldn't be having fun with that person because right. you know, I'm not, I'm not supposed to mom, mom is alone at home. And, you know, but I think if the bio mom is able to say, 
it's okay. We have enough. Your heart is big enough to love a lot of people and we're not done. You're going to meet a lot of people. And I think this r release them of that, that, that burden. Burden. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a life lesson that can be applied to so many other pieces of your life moving forward. I think learning to like people, uh, uh, being open to, to, to kind of seeing what's out there, whether it's another step parent or step brother, step sister. In, in our case, it also applies to your work environment, or it also applies to if you're playing on a sports team, it, it's a lesson that I think can be very good to, to kind of have in, inside. And, and what, the earlier you get to learn that, that it's okay to like something that you don't have to feel bad because you like it. Uh, it's going to make everybody's life much easier. And like Phil mentioned, it takes the burden off, takes the weight off. And, and that alone is, you know, makes your life much, much better and much, it will, will fill it up even more as you grow older. Right. And Frank, I think you said something about this about letting the relationships form naturally. Don't push them. Everybody's going to blend or connect or whatever at their own pace. And they may never. You know, exactly. some stepmoms or stepdads will never bond with their stepkids. And that's unfortunate, but it doesn't mean that either one of them is bad or wrong. Exactly. Yeah, there's a difference between blending, bonding, and respecting. Yes. I, I think there's, at the end of the day, at the least that you want is is mutual respect. Uh, that's if you get that, that you should be happy with it. If you're not getting the respect, well, that that's a different problem at different ages. Uh, but I think the fact that at the end of the day, when you when you look back, you go, okay, well, maybe we didn't have much in common, which is absolutely plausible but at least we respect each other. We can have a, a a nice conversation about something. I may not call you up to go to the movies, but when we do meet, we can have a nice supper with the family and we can, we can mingle amongst ourselves and go our separate ways. And, and we're happy with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. exactly. Well, thank y'all so much for being a guest. Thank you for having us, Lori. And to our listeners, go check out their blog. It's Ella's blended family.com. And yes. you get to see cute pictures of everybody. I was looking at the pictures of the kids and the hats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that picture. And especially that one of them has a baseball cap on and the others don't. Yeah, there's a lot of pictures on there for sure. <laughs> You're going to see family pictures and dog pictures and some of the activities we do. Uh, there's there's some some great things that we we came up with and things that we we borrow from others that worked really well with, with our family. So yeah. for sure, it's a, it's a place for, for us that we get to create memories, but we get to share some advice and some cool things with, with the others. Yes. And I'm so thankful that y'all were helping other people because we know that there are 1,300 at least blended families created a day and they need help. They need to know that they're not alone. And like Cecile and I both were like, we got to get out of here. This is crazy. I can't handle it. We need those tools to be able to handle these things. Exactly. Because so, we don't, for me, it was, I don't want my kids to go through another divorce or separation again. Yeah. That was painful. So for me, it was, I'm not uprooting my son again. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know David had actually mentioned options for us. And one of them being, okay, what if y'all move out and go live somewhere else? Not that we're going to get divorced or split up, but just so we can figure out how to do this better because it's not working. And I know people that have done that, but my response was, if I leave, I'm not coming back. That's right. Yeah. I would probably say the same thing if I would have left. Uh, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's a shame because we look at where we're at today uh, or we're 2023 and you look at the support, there's a support system there for what is considered normal families, which I think now blended families are becoming a norm. Yes. But there's not a whole lot for aspects of blended families. There's, there's things that we go through that no other normal family, uh, air quotes there, mm -hmm. will actually go through. But there's no support patterns for that. There's there's nothing there to go. The information is hard to find even today, So that, which is great. So that's why I think 
how we've been following you for for a long while too and, and it's good to see that we're starting to get that information out to the to the general public because you know, like we mentioned for most families that go into a blended family i think it's something like 70 percent of those fail yeah so yeah it's very very high yeah. and if we can actually move that needle in the right direction i think uh we as as i say the collective we here mm -hmm. uh it, it makes it worth our while because we've succeeded we're we're the lucky ones yes we're, it could have gone in any direction but you know it brought us to where we're at just by hard work sheer luck whatever how you want to chalk it up but i think it's good for us to to kind of be able to give that to others because we we're, we're lucky enough to kind of go through it and cecile's done a a good job she she's always like research that's kind of part of her background <laughs> so she's dug it all up all all across the the globe uh she fell on on your on your information a while back i know some of that was inspiration for us too so we appreciate that by the way and we hope to pay it forward well i am glad that it could help and i have no doubt that you are paying it forward even just being a guest here you're helping other people oh well thank you yes <laughs> all right well y'all have a great day and you'll have to come back again sometime yes Perfect. absolutely thank you very much one thing that we talk about in this episode is trying to love the stepkids when they hurt your bio kids. That is hard. H-A-R-D. Hard. Very hard. But one thing that I had to learn through this process is siblings argue. Step-siblings argue. We can't always rescue our kids. If they're at school, we can't rescue them, even at daycare. If they have a confrontation with someone, they need to address it. They need to have the tools to be able to handle those situations. And it's also important for your step-siblings to build relationships for themselves. And if you are always rescuing your bio child from any confrontation, it's going to make the stepkids and the bio kids not be able to build that relationship on their own. Some of my best memories are fights my sisters and I had. What's the relationship like between your stepkids and your bio kids? Do you find yourself siding with your kid? Do you find yourself intervening anytime there's a disagreement or argument? Are you teaching your bio kid the tools to deal with issues that may arise in their life when you're not around? All right, that's all I got for today. Hope y'all enjoyed. Have a good week. And until next time, remember, life is good when you nacho. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Nacho Kids Podcast. Find us online at nachokids.com. Until next time, remember, life is good when you nacho.